I'd like you to proceed with caution on these two properties. TJ, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I am your host, James Wise, right now coming to you from the home studio due to the current situation. Hopefully, uh, we'll get back into the Holton Wise TV studio soon, uh, but not to worry during this time of social distancing, the Holton Wise staff all essential field staff still in the field handling business as normal. Just our sales and media folks are working offsite because we can still provide the same level of service to you guys from offsite locations. But all those onsite folks, we're still handling renovations. We're still doing maintenance. We're still leasing properties. So no need to slow down your investing. As a matter of fact, I think right now is one of the best times to try to get aggressive. During the last crash about 10 years ago, that's where I built my real estate portfolio. That's how I built my business. And, uh, you know, fast forward over $200 million in real estate sales, currently managing a portfolio up in the $75 million range as far as value, thousands of tenants, et cetera. I, I would say it worked out pretty well for me uh, getting aggressive uh, back in the day when everyone else was running scared. And an investor that's getting aggressive is my dude, TJ, man. TJ, we just recently uh, closed on a deal for you, brother. Um, everybody else, um, I'm going to put this video on the show notes below. You know, you guys have been looking for some follow-up and stuff. Uh, I did an analysis on this property for TJ, helped them buy it. 39, what was the address? 3965 West 22nd. We just recently closed on that, man. Hell of a deal for you, TJ. My team is currently in the process of getting that renovated so we can get you a tenant. And uh, today I'm going to go over two properties uh, that you had found for me that you're pretty interested in. And uh, yeah, I want you to proceed with some serious caution here, man, because I'm not uh, too high on either of these deals. Let's jump into the first one. 3496 East Scarborough Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. Now, this has uh, been listed about two weeks ago from a, a cat out of a company called Owners.com. All right, listed it for $61,100. And um, the first thing we need to do is just cruise through these photos, bro. And I am uh, not impressed with this deal, man. Like, even before we get in the inside, right, we got... Uh, picture the outside here <clears throat> all this peeling paint right all over this wood siding now the thing is this house is built in 1945 almost all the housing stock you guys are going to be looking at in the cleveland market is going to be built before 1978 okay and that's um uh when they outlawed lead-based paint okay so a lot of stuff can happen if you got peeling paint right the way it works in cleveland in Ohio, so to speak, anything built before 1978, we need to fill out what's called a lead-based paint disclosure form. And you have to disclose if you know there's been any lead-based paint uh, utilized in your property. <clears throat> the overwhelming percent of uh, times, like 99.9% .9 of times, uh, most people have no knowledge, right? Because, you know, 78, that was, that was like, what, four, 42 years ago or something like that? Uh, hope my math was right off the top of my head there. Uh, so like 40 plus years ago, they haven't used this paint. So like most people have no clue if it was ever used. So most of the time you just need to be honest about your level of knowledge and that's, you, you know, you have no knowledge. Does that necessarily mean there is no lead-based paint that's ever been used in your property? Probably not, but you know, you're not required to test for it. Um, you just have to disclose your level of knowledge. Okay. But here's the thing, once it's peeling like this and you got issues, that could sometimes cause, uh, you know, cities to come out or tenants uh, will be making an issue. And then if the city or somebody else like that does test it and there is lead-based paint, you then need to go in 
and, and you got to mitigate it and that can get very, very expensive. So what you want to do, you want to nip something like this in the bud before you get tenants living there. So you're going to be spending a few thousand dollars, you know, encapsulating this or either repainting it. So you might want to scrape and paint or you just vinyl side the whole house, but you vinyl side this house, you're looking at like five to $8,000 probably. Uh, and then when we get into the house, dude, it's a foreclosure. Uh, okay. This thing is just beat to all hell. Like looking at this kitchen, right? You see where the fridge, uh, or perhaps that's where the stove would be. Now nah, it's probably where the fridge would be over in the right hand corner. Uh, you know, we got like mold all over the floor and the walls. And then, yeah, the stove would be right on the left, uh, right next to the kitchen counter there, but just, you know, beat the shit. Obviously cosmetically it's all fucked. Uh, but you know, the, the presence of mold is pretty gross. Uh, so you'd have to do the normal, uh, you know, the normal interior stuff, Flo floors, walls, but then we got mold issues going into the bathroom here. This is a, a big, a big, a big sign here. Okay. You see how there's the blue painters tape over your sink, over your tub, over your toilet, which by the way, it looks like, I can't really tell, but it looks kind of like the back of that toilet is broken. I don't know, but that toilet's old. All these fixtures would need to get ripped out. You got mold up in there. Well, we could probably actually reglaze that tub, but you know, you'd want to get rid of that sink and that toilet, replace them with new ones. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, what I really, what what I really get from this picture is that that blue tape. All right, what that means, and this is what happens when properties get foreclosed upon. All the utilities were turned off, and the home was winterized. Okay. So as far as doing the proper due diligence, right, you're smart, right? TJ, you know the game, you're smart. The first thing you do is you get an analysis from me before you make a purchase. That's always step one, guys. You got to see if the price makes sense, if the neighborhood makes sense, if it's got potential to be an earner. I am your first barrier to losing money when you're investing in the Cleveland market. And as good as I am, as smart as I am, my knowledge of the Cleveland, I know there's gonna be a lot of motherfuckers out there like, fuck this asshole, he's not smart, whatever, fuck you guys, I know what I'm doing. But I am just the first step, okay? I'm just the first step. What I don't do is the second step, which is actually, you know, getting in there, crawling around, making sure everything in the house works, right? I'm just line of defense, but that second line of defense is going to be the home inspector, right? They're going to get in, do the, do the rest of the due diligence, right? We got to continue the due diligence to make sure we're mitigating your risk. But when you get a foreclosure like this, that's got this blue tape like this, you can't do as much due diligence as you normally would do, right? The water's off, the utilities are off, and the bank, they're not going to turn it back on. So we've got Got no clue if the plumbing fixtures and the plumbing system works, right? You, you know, it, it gets cold here in Cleveland. So a lot of times what happens, if there's water in the pipes, it freezes, it expands, it cracks the pipes. Why it's still frozen, you don't necessarily know. You know, then you go to turn it on later when it's warm, boom, it bursts. You know, it could be in walls doing thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage. In addition, we can't check to see if the electrical system's working. We can't check to see if the furnace and stuff like that is working. So there's going to be like just an extra layer of unknowns, all right, when you're buying a foreclosure. Now, that does not mean um, you can never buy a foreclosure right? You, you know, there's, there's still some deals to be had, but the price has to be worth the risk, right? And like, look, you know, worst case scenario, I could break it down for you guys. Like if you need a new hot water tank, you're looking at a G. If you need a new furnace, you're looking at three Gs. If we had to replumb this entire house, that'd be another few grand, right? So it's not like it, we're totally unknown. Like I, you know, I could, I could kind of lay it out for you, but the thing is, this property, the price, it just, it, it ain't going to pass, man. The price is 61100 And just based on everything that I'm looking at here, man, like worst case scenario, we could be, you know, up to 40 grand, uh, you know, to, to do all this. If we go worst case scenario on everything, you could be almost into 40 grand for this bad boy. Cause like everything is jacked. We don't know what's going on at the utility. Like we might have to literally gut and redo everything. It appears there's some type of water issues in the home. So like worst case scenario, we could be at 40 G's with the property already priced at 61,000. Like that would make any sense, right? You'd be all into this bad boy for a hundred K and uh, you know, it, it'd probably generate a thousand or a little bit higher in rent, but dude, there's, you know, there's just so much uh, better opportunities out there, right? Like, would it be the worst thing in the entire world to be all into a property for like a hundred grand in Cleveland Heights and getting like a thousand bucks in rent when everything's totally turnkey? No, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. You wouldn't go bankrupt or anything like that. But it reminds me of uh, being chased by a bear, right? Like, here's the deal, man. 
you don't necessarily have to be faster than a bear uh, to live through a bear attack. All you got to do is be uh, faster than your buddy who's next to you, right? Uh, you know, he'll, the bear will catch him. And uh, what I mean by that is, like, it's, it wouldn't be the worst deal in the world, but, like, I could, you know, put together so many other deals that would just have better numbers and be better for you than this particular property. Uh, that for that reason and that reason alone, there's no need to look into this any further, man. This one is a stinker. This one's a dud. In addition to all that, Cleveland Heights is a point of sale city. All right. And the, the listing agent, uh, they haven't said anything about the point of sale. It, other than they said this is an as is sale, you must fix everything. So like, dude, with what I'm looking at, we're going to have a huge ass escrow, POS escrow, right? Uh, for more information on what the POS is in the show notes below, I've got a video uh, that explains the POS process for, for everybody out there who's not familiar. And TJ, the last deal you and I did, uh, the one that just closed, right? The one I was talking about, 3965 West 22nd, that was in Cleveland, not Cleveland Heights. So you didn't have to deal with the POS. That's a whole extra layer of BS. So for more information on that BS, it's in the show notes below, brother. You definitely want to check that out. And then one other thing that makes this kind of a stinker is the taxes, right? Your property that we just did for you, dude, that's that's in Cleveland. Tax rate's lower, 2.79%, okay? This one is in Cleveland Heights. So in addition to that POS, you got the higher taxes. One of the highest tax cities in the, in the Cleveland market. Uh, if you go to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, you know, that's where I break all the stuff down at A to F scale. And yeah, the neighborhood itself is pretty nice, but as far as taxes, check that out, right? 3.8%. So that's another thing that's going to be hurting your numbers. If we're all into this thing at a value of like $100,000, dude, you got almost $4,000 a year in property taxes coming out. So, man, we don't got to outrun the bear, but, you know, let's just make sure we outrun our buddy. Let me, let me find you a better deal, right? You ain't going bankrupt if you do this deal, uh, but I can do better for you. I can, I can get you a lot of better properties. So for those reasons, man, I do not – uh, want to look into this any further. I'm not going to break down the rental numbers uh, because we could just produce a much better deal for you. Our time uh, and resources could be utilized uh, going after much better properties. So let's just get rid of this one. Let's just move this sucker off the table. Uh, now let's go to a, a word from the sponsors of today's show and I'm going to get into the second property you sent to me. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month so for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. All right, TJ. Now, the second property that you sent for me, man, this one, uh, unfortunately, is a freaking stinker as well, dude. We got a couple stinkers here, but that's all right. That, that's what you're paying me for. You're paying me to protect your money, right? Uh, getting you a good deal is one thing, but keeping you out of a bad deal, that's even more important. And this one, dude, this is like fool's gold, man. I've had a lot of people interested in this. And, uh, you know, you're like probably the third or fourth person uh, that's been very interested in this. And it, it's just a bunch of BS. The seller is a Yahoo. I don't know why 
he keeps presenting this. Uh, he's presenting it in a way that makes it look like it's going to be a badass deal, hence so many people interested in it. But it's really just a big piece of crap. It's fool's gold. So uh, I want to take you to the footage uh, that I've got on this. I've just got uh, tons of footage because I, I've ran the numbers. on. Uh, you know, I've looked into this for so many people because everybody sees it and they're like, oh, it's going to be a good deal. It, it's not. And it's and I'm going to explain why. So in episode 55, though, uh, I was actually searching for my client, Dan. I was looking for two properties for him, and this was one of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, have you take a look at some of that footage right now so you can see what my thoughts were on the property at that time. Second property that I have found for you, 3234 Euclid Heights Boulevard, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. This is a duplex listed by another property management company called Fast Management. That is good. That's going to come into play. Let's pull up the photos. This duplex is listed at $94,000. All right, this duplex, this is a beast. This is a big, big monster of a building. One unit's got five bedrooms. The other one has three. Cruising through the photos. They did like a very, very minimal quality, you know, renovation here. You could tell that the particular seller was looking to go on a budget when they did this. You'll see this a lot um, from landlords that are really looking to spend the lowest amount of money. They carpeted it, right, instead of uh, pulling up the carpet and refinishing the hardwoods. That's one hint that they wanted to get things done as cheaply as possible. The second is... The wall color and the trim were painted the exact same color. They just took the exact same paint, just slapped it all over there. They didn't take uh, effort into actually painting the walls one color with the trim another color. Uh, when you're a landlord, unless you're buying like super low income stuff, I don't really recommend doing that. Maybe if we're in the hood, yeah, maybe that might be okay. But in my experience, is providing folks with a decent look in place is the best move you're going to get paid back many times over with lower turnover costs not to mention like this is cleveland heights this is a b-class neighborhood so um, i don't think that was the smartest move but it doesn't deter me from thinking this is still a good deal based upon the numbers though um, but truth be told if i were you and I was only going to pull the trigger on one of these properties I've highlighted for you today. I do like 8331 Garfield Boulevard better. It's not to say I don't like this one. I just, you know, they're not exactly equal. I think the Garfield one is a little bit better. This one, number-wise, is going to pan out to a higher cash-on-cash cash return. But I, I think this property was just better taken care of. So keep that in mind. As far as the rents, they're pretty high. 900 for the upstairs. That's because it's got five beds, one bath. You might even be able to get that up to like a thousand uh, on the next turnover. If you know when we do it, we do it a lot nicer, right? We paint it all, you know, neutral color on the wall, but we paint the trim white, and then we expose the nice hardwoods and refinish those. You know, and make it look a lot nicer, right? Probably get up to a thousand downstairs. That's that's quite a bit of rent for that downstairs. Eight twenty-five, and that's a three-one. So currently, right now, we're bringing in seventeen twenty-five a month, or twenty thousand seven hundred a year. The price point on this bad boy is only ninety. Four thousand dollars. As far as your numbers of that seventeen twenty-five, you're bringing in same thing as before, man. We got a we got a budget for stuff, right? Repairs and maintenance, we're gonna budget thousand thirty-two a year. Vacancy and non-payment, we're gonna budget another thousand thirty-two a year. Capex, we're gonna budget another thousand thirty-two a year. As far as those taxes, they're four forty a month. Insurance should be eighty bucks a month to insure this as well. Again, click the show notes below if you'd like my company to go ahead and quote out an insurance uh, policy on this particular property or anybody else watching this who's got rental properties anywhere in the United States of America. Just fill in your information there, and we'll get you a quote. We'll see if you can beat your premium. We probably can. Water and sewer. 150 a month we're going to estimate long care just like the other property 44 bucks a month on average pm fees 172 a month so monthly expenses on average that we're budgeting for 1144 dollars the noi should pencil out to an average of 581 for the month or 6966 for the year now <clears throat> if everything went well uh, and you purchased the Garfield property, right? You only spent $20,000, which means you got 
$35,000 left. You can go ahead and buy both of these bad boys. Doing this one with the mortgage, you'd only need to spend $23,500. That'd be a mortgage amount of $70,500. After you paid off your teeny mortgage at three fifty seven dollars a month, this is going to be 4,284 a year that you're spending, not a lot. After all that, you got 224 a month in free cash flow coming in per month or 2,682 per year, which does pencil out to an 11.41% cash on cash return or a 7.3 cap. Now, I understand the Garfield property uh, had a higher um, or I had a lower cash on cash return, but I, I did like that property better. I think you should buy both. I think they're both good deals. But if you're only going to pick one, I do like the Garfield one better. One of the reasons I, I don't like this particular property is, A, we've seen the hints, right, from the units that the, the current owner, right, he's tried to fix things as cheaply as possible. That's just what we can see. So there's other stuff. You know, it's just a clue, right, for the type of owner that we're dealing with here. I'm guesstimating that uh, if he took the cheap route on the paint, he probably took the cheap route on a lot of other stuff. However... He's got a professional management company in there now. So what you want to do is if you're going to have him do repairs, you're going to want that management company. We're going to want to ask that management company to do the repairs and hire licensed contractors because the particular property has a gigantic point of sale inspection report, which I've got for you guys on the screen. This thing is huge. Now, according to the agent they are currently working on these repairs, and it is negotiable what happens with the point of sale. So in my opinion, I think the smartest move, if you're to buy this, would be, of course, to make a contingent on a home inspection. Of course, make a contingent on your financing. And then we want to offer them full price. We want to come in and be like, hey, $94,000, no problem. We will pay $94,000, but you got to clear off this big old POS, and you need to have the management company hire licensed contractors, and provide us with receipts. On top of that, more due diligence. You're going to ensure that the work is being done because the city has to go back and they have to reinspect all those repairs. So if they try to take the cheap route out, the city should likely catch that. So that's just more protection for you. And then you don't have to worry about any of this stuff because, I mean, this is like page after page after page of just – Knick-knack stuff here, knick-knack stuff there. And I, I have this in a PDF if you'd like it. Uh, send an email to sales at holtonwise.com, and we'll get you the PDF of this uh, POS inspection report for you to review. Now, the city put an escrow estimate of – where is it? It's on the last page. This thing keeps going. Keeps on going. The city put an escrow estimate of $24,000 on this, but just based on how big it is, man, you know, I, I think this could easily get up into like the $35,000, $40,000 range. So you don't want to mess with getting in uh, to doing all those repairs. That's not what you're interested in. So let's use the fact that they said they're starting on the repairs and it's negotiable what happens with all them, and they have access to a property management company that has access to licensed general contractors. Let's use all that to their, your advantage. Let's have you come in with a full-priced offer, but you ask them to clear off that point-of-sale inspection report. If they balked at providing you a completely clear point-of-sale, you know, that's just something, that's a bridge we're going to have to cross when we get there. We'll have to see what they're offering. Maybe there's a few items that they don't want to handle and maybe we'll have to work that into the price or of course you have the opportunity to walk at any point in time all right jose welcome back so as you could see at the time i, I you know i had some ideas i thought there was going to be some things uh that were going to work out well for my client dan he made offers on the property he made an offer on the property utilizing the strategy i discussed in the video um but that it all fell apart it didn't work out we ended up not doing the deal with the particular seller Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built in marketing tools. 
Just enter the details of your property and Red Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. And in my opinion, with what I know now, which I'm about to go through, I don't think you should try to engage in doing a deal with that particular seller either. So I'm going to go ahead and James Wise deny mm. this particular deal. And I'm going to deny it for a few reasons. Reason number one, knowing you, knowing what your goals are, Jose, I don't think that property is going to work for you. Because what you want to do is you want to utilize some funds and you want to get a bank loan. You want to utilize, uh, I think last time we spoke, you had about $30,000. You just want to put your money down and you don't want to do major renovations. Now, with everything you saw me say in that video, in the footage there, this would still make sense because the idea is to try to get the seller to do that point of sale, especially now that he's got that management company. This is listed by FAS, okay? He's got them involved now, so you would think that he can go ahead and do the POS stuff because in their listing, they wrote that the POS was negotiable. However, what we found when we tried bidding on this property for my other client, Dan, the seller no longer is willing to do any of that. They don't want to do any of that. They, they do not want to do any of it. They offered us a $12,000 concession to have us assume the entire thing. Now, granted, that POS is going to cost a hell of a lot more than $12,000. They wanted us to assume the entire thing, and that was all they were going to give us. So reason number one, you don't have a bunch of money, and you're not interest, don't have a bunch of cash available to do repairs. You're not interested in doing repairs. That's one reason I think this deal is not going to work out for you. Number two. I think that uh, the seller, you know, he's offering too small of a discount, right? Only $12,000. If he's not going to be willing to do any of it, I would like to see him offer a little bit better of a discount than that. Number two. Number three. When you do one of these deals and you're trying to utilize financing, it's so much better if we can get the sellers to fix it because banks have issues with there being just a ton of repairs, right? It, it makes actually getting the deal through underwriting a total pain in the ass. So like if you're going to buy a deal and you want to assume a ton of uh, violations, you know, those are great for bird deals, right? You come in, you pay cash, and then when once everything is all buttoned up, good, good to go, then you get... Uh, the property, you know, you want to send in a bank, get it appraised, refinance all your money back out. But if you're trying to finance it up front, that doesn't work. And then the last reason that I think that this would not work for you is how the seller's going about this. I don't think the seller, what I, what I think the issue is with the seller is the seller has to sell it, I believe, for around 94000 because I think they owe a lot of money with their mortgage. They're trying to do things that are just in a very confusing way, right? Now, what I mean by that is any reasonable, normal person, you know, if you want to offer me a $12,000 discount and have me assume the whole POS, you would say, you know, we offered 94000 which was full price, and asked them to go ahead and clear the POS. They're, what they wanted to do with us is they wanted to make us do the entire POS, but instead of reducing the price 94000 instead of going down to 82000 like what a normal person would do, they tried to get all fancy and finicky with concessions, and they tried to make the purchase price still 94000 but post-closing would somehow come back to us and, and give us a $12,000 cost concession discount. Long story short, the whole thing sounded goofy. I didn't like it. It doesn't make any sense. I'm thinking perhaps maybe the guy owes too much money uh, on a mortgage or something and, and doesn't have that those funds right now and thinks he's going to get them somewhere. They're just trying to do it totally confusing it and not the way it should normally go down so i just think engaging with uh, this particular seller is just a a waste of time waste of energy waste of effort in addition another tip for you uh as far as those concessions go um in real estate right you know we could either reduce the price or people can offer concessions a very common concession is you go to buy a property and the seller offers to pay up to 3% of the purchase price towards your closing cost prepaids and assists that's pretty nice uh, that is used a lot. We utilize that a lot so you don't have to bring as much money to the table uh, out of your pocket, right? Because those closing costs and stuff, you would have to pay for those up front. So if you were to do a deal like you buy a property for $100,000, 
and let's say there's three thousand dollars worth of closing costs prepaids and, and points if you were to just have the seller reduce that price down to ninety seven thousand dollars it would be the same for the seller However, you as the buyer would need to come up with more money up front to get that seller the same net. Because on a $100,000 deal, your down payment would be 25 k plus you have those $3,000 worth of closing costs, prepaids, and assists that you have to pay. However, if you ask for the seller to just give you a concession, the seller still walks away from the same amount of money because you're going to pay them a hundred K okay you're paying a hundred K but they have to concede that 3k so they're still getting their 97 but for you you don't have to come up with all of that money up front all you need to do is come up with your down payment so in that particular situation a concession makes sense in this particular situation it doesn't in addition what is not really widely known by a lot of buyers out there is your lender is going to have a limit to how much the seller is actually allowed to give you in a concession. It's typically between 3% and 6% of the purchase price. So in this particular deal, the seller trying to offer a $12,000 closing concession wouldn't work because I don't know any traditional lender that would allow that. The limits are much lower. In addition, as I said earlier, banks have a problem writing loans on properties that everyone knows there's a whole bunch of repair issues on so making a huge concession like that the fact that it's above the limit for any concession is, is one one aspect but another aspect is you're just highlighting that the property itself needs a ton of repairs and that could be a problem with your lender so for all of those reasons i'm going to go ahead and have to just james wise <laughs> deny this deal all right, TJ, that's, uh, that's, that's my thoughts on that property. Uh, you know, as you can see, many times over, uh, I think that one's a stinker. And the first one we did, that's a stinker too, man. But again, my, my number one priority here is to keep you guys out of bad deals. That's why it's important to do the due diligence, right? Your home inspectors, they can handle stuff inside the property, but what they can't tell you about is how much the property is going to make for you and, you know, look at it from a business perspective. So that's why the number one step when you're investing in long distance markets is always to do that due diligence. Always get yourself an unbiased opinion, right? I mean, I'm getting paid either way, right? You've paid me for this service. And you know, you get some folks out there like, ah, oh, I, I don't want to pay you. Other realtors will work as my realtor for free. Yeah, that's cool, bro. But they ain't working for free. Yeah, you're not paying them up front, but you're paying them. Okay. They get paid when you close a deal, bro. So like if you go to your barber and you say, hey, barber, Mr. Barber, do I need a haircut? What the hell you think he's going to say, man? He's going to say, yeah, bro, you need a goddamn haircut. So, you know, you, you talk to a realtor who only gets a paycheck from you if you get past the finish line, if you close the deal, what do you think they're going to be doing when they're giving you advice, right? They're going to be pushing you to close the deal. They want you to close the deal. So that's why, you know, you pay your home inspector up front. You, you, you wouldn't hire a home inspector uh, to inspect your property and tell them, hey, man, if I close on the property, then you'll get paid. If I don't close on the property, you won't get paid. Yeah. Try doing that and let, me, and let me see how accurate those home inspection reports actually end up being, right? Of course, if you pay the guy regardless, then you're going to get a much more accurate report. Similar thing here. So anybody else, if you'd like this level of service, you'd like me to keep you out of trouble. You'd like me to make sure you don't get yourself in a bad deal. You want to do the proper due diligence, be a smart risk mitigated investor like my guy TJ. I want you to go to holtwise.com, click the property search for sale tab. Order yourself some MLS search analysis packages. Right now we're running the 10 property sale. That's the best deal because you get to work one-on-one -on -one with me long-term. I've obviously discounted it like crazy. In addition, right, you could bring me properties. I could bring you properties. We go back and forth. We close deals. You develop a nice long-term relationship uh, with me. And, you know, since I've been paid up front, you know I'm always there ready to work for you. You're never going to hear me say, oh, I don't have time to analyze this for you. No, it's a product. You bought it. I'm going to give you my, you know, top level of service. I'm going to provide to you is most uh, the most accurate and unbiased advice I possibly can. And uh, even though I can represent you as your agent in the purchase of these properties, you know, I take great pride in keeping you guys out of bad deals as evidenced by uh, these two deals right here, right? You know, 
if I told TJ to move forward with these deals, I, I would have been paid. But, uh, you know, that's, that's not how we do this. And, uh, you know, we're already being compensated quite well by TJ uh, for getting the video. So I think it is the smartest way for investors to go into, into out-of-state markets and really make sure they don't overpay uh, or, you know, end up in a rough deal. So that's all I've got for you guys on that front. So check that out if you're interested in working with us one-on-one. And TJ, we still got some more properties we're going to be looking at uh, to help you build your portfolio. So more is coming your way. Let's just go ahead and hit the pause button on these two. Let's just, you know, move these off the table and let's look to some newer properties uh, that uh, have a much better chance at making you some more money, my man. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise. And this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Over 50% of those living in the greater Memphis area rent their home. This fact combined with the high price to rent ratio is why Forbes rates Memphis, Tennessee as one of the top real estate investment markets in the country. Memphis Investment Properties and their sister property management company, Reedy & Company Realtors, are among the largest and most trusted turnkey operations in this market. With over 30 years in business, a portfolio consisting of more than 2,700 active rentals, and an impeccable track record renovating over 6,000 single-family homes, it's no surprise they are one of the most reputable turnkey operations in the United States. Discount Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Beal, author of The Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price-to-rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.